today's most wanted domestic terrorists on the morning of April 19, 1995, a man parked a rental truck packed with explosives in front of the Alfred P. Murad Federal Building in Oklahoma City. At 9.02 a.m., the explosives detonated, killing 168 people, including 19 children. This wasn't the work of a foreign terrorist group. Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, former U.S. Army soldiers, were convicted of the attack. McVeigh was executed in 2001, and Nichols is serving a life sentence. Twenty years later, domestic terror threats ranged from white supremacists to eco-terrorists to anti-government extremists and radical separatist groups, according to the FBI. The FBI's goal, of course, is to prevent homegrown attacks before they happen. Unfortunately, this isn't always possible. When acts of domestic terror do occur, the FBI investigates and tries to catch those responsible. From McVeigh and Nichols to Eric Rudolph to Ted Kaczynski, the FBI is often successful, but every once in a while, the suspects get away. It was September 26, 1981, when a crowd gathered at John F. Kennedy International Airport for an anti-apartheid demonstration. Among the protesters, the FBI says, was Anna Joan Barup, an alleged member of the May 19th Communist Organization. The radical group advocated overthrowing the U.S. government. The protest turned violent, and Borup allegedly tossed a caustic substance in the eyes of a Port Authority police officer. According to the Port Authority, he lost all or most of his sight. Borup and others were arrested and released on bail, but Borup never showed up for her trial. An arrest warrant was issued in 1982. Today, she would be in her late 50s to mid-60s, standing between 5 feet 4 inches and 5 feet 6 inches. According to the FBI, Barup is thought to have a photographic memory and is highly intelligent. The FBI considers her armed and dangerous. Jury Laverne Alton